Have you ever felt like God says one thing and then does another? Like maybe God makes promises, but he doesn't always fulfill them. If that's where you're at, I've been there and I feel you. There have been so many times when the reality that I'm facing, it didn't align with what I thought God had promised me. And in those moments, it's, it's so hard to, to reconcile the two. Well, today we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. And we're going to talk about the way in which Jesus and God's answers are always yes and yes. And I'm going to explain what that means here. So we're going to start just a little heads up. Paul is here describing, he's writing a letter to the Corinthians, describing why he had to change his plans, why he said yes at first and then no later. So we start in verse 16. He says, I plan to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. When I planned this, did I do it lightly or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say, yes, yes, and no, no. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is preached among you, by me and Silas and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. My friend, all of God's promises are yes and yes, even when it feels like God vacillates or goes back on his word. And before we end, I wanna give us three ways that we can begin to understand God's character better and maybe even begin to ask better questions of him. I think sometimes we ask questions that can confuse us later. And so I want to give us I want to give us three ways that we can pray to God or ask questions so that we can really better understand his truthfulness and his steadfastness. So, the first thing, when we pray, we must pray embracing ambiguity. Ambiguity. Excuse me. And I'm going to read Matthew 13 Verse 13 through 14, it says this, This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not hear, or excuse me, though seeing, they do not see, though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Now, if that doesn't sound ambiguous, I don't know what does. For some reason, and honestly, I can't fully explain it, but Jesus chooses to operate in a layer of ambiguity so often. And I think that that is because we need to be broken of our dependence of our own will, of our own mind. And in order to do that, God intentionally makes things, the world, our reality ambiguous because it forces us to depend on him. So number one, embrace ambiguity. ambiguity. Number two, embrace audacity. Now we're going to look at Matthew 21, verse 21. So Matthew 21, verse 21 says this, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. Verse 22 says this, if you believe, you will receive what you ask for in prayer. We are called to pray with audacity. No matter what you're praying for, no matter what your pain is or your limitation is, no matter what it is in your life that you feel like is too big for God to handle, we have to risk things not going the way we want them to. Sometimes we pray for things in audacity and they don't happen the way we wish they would. And yet God still calls us to pray audacious prayers, to pray in faith. That's what he desires. So number two is pray with audacity. And finally, number three is to pray with authority. And we're going to look at John chapter 14, verse 12. So John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. 
When we pray in Jesus' name, Jesus actually gives us authority. He gives us authority over spiritual stuff. And sometimes it's hard for us to step out in that authority in boldness. But here we see that Jesus calls us to do just that. So my friend, my encouragement for you is when you feel like God has let you down, when you feel disappointed because you feel like Jesus says yes, but then in the next, the same breath, he says no, my encouragement to you is to ask questions, the right questions, ask and pray, embracing ambiguity, embracing audacity, and embracing your authority in Christ. And I firmly believe that you will see that all of God's answers are yes and yes. God never lets us down. God never goes back on his word. We just need to learn to ask the right questions. Let's pray. God, I pray that when we feel disappointed by our circumstances, when we feel like you said one thing, but something else happened, Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember, Lord, that no matter what we perceive is going on, God, your yes is always yes, Father. You do not vacillate like man does. You do not go back on your word, Lord, but your word is true, God. Every word out of your mouth never returns void. And so, Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would help us, help us to embrace the ambiguity that you desire, Father. Help us to pray with audacity, God, and help us to step out in the authority that you have given us, Jesus. Lord, it's not easy, Father, but God, it's so good to walk in this way, Lord, to know that you are good and your yes is always yes, God. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are, Lord. Help us to walk in truth. Help us to walk with you. In your name we pray. Amen.